for the last talk today. Uh, so it will be uh, Xin Wenzhu from Caltech who will speak about unipotent categorical local language correspondence. Okay, uh, thanks organizers for the invitation. It's a great uh, pleasure and honor to speak in this uh, symposium in honor of Peter Schalzer. I think I first met Peter in 2010 in the fall. I think the, at that time, Rappaport was sub sabbatical and uh, brought Eugen, uh, uh, Peter, and uh, Timo to Harvard. I think and I was a poster there. Like Timo, like Peter was already like that, that time famous for his new proof of local Longlands. But um, anyway, I, I remember I, Wei Zhang and I was, were teaching on Tuesday, Thursday morning, and then after that, we and uh, uh, all go to dim, uh, go to lunch. And after lunch, we use, sometimes we chat a little bit, like uh, probably in the Wei Zhang, you should talk about arithmetic fundamental lemma, and uh, Peter and I sometimes like chat a little bit at in the like, Harvard's common room. I probably I told Peter at that time I was thinking about something like the local model of Shimura artists, thinking about like uh, taking nearby cycles along uh, characteristic, eco characteristic direction and the mixed characteristic, mixed characteristic direction. So I think one, I remember one day uh, we're sitting in the com Harvard's common room and uh, Peter told me he was thinking something related and uh, he said uh, he had some new understanding of this uh, phantom Winter Burgess theory, and he explained that to me. I I knew nothing about periodic Hodge theory at that time. I I heard those like this field norm construction before, but I couldn't understand anything. It was just too complicated. But somehow after Peter explained to me, I start to appreciate it. I think okay, that maybe something could be understand, could be understood. But of course, at that time, I could not. Expect and could not imagine it was this Peter's this new idea actually changed out the whole field of arithmetic geometry in the last ten years. Okay, so I guess this was uh, uh, the starting time, like the beginning when I met Peter. Okay, so uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, some joint work with uh, uh, Tamir Himo about some. Uh, Unipotent categorical local longlands correspondence. So, oops. so let's start uh, with the basic setup. F is a non Archimedean local field, and uh, we have Wei group, Galois group of F. Uh, G is a connected reductive group over F, and uh, we have the longlands do group. Okay, so uh, the classical local longlands correspondence. Roughly predicts a natural bijection between two sets. One is the set of smoothly reducible representations of uh, G and GF, and uh, the other set is Langlands parameters. So basically, the map of Wei groups to the do group up to G hat conjugation. And uh, uh, for GLN, of course, this, I mean, this is, of course, trivially for trivial reasons, uh, these two sets have the same, I mean, they have probably have the same. Mean, uh, like have cardinality, so there's different bijection, but the problem is the natural. Naturality can be made precise for GLN, and uh, there was actually this theorem for the equal characteristic was 19, 1990 by Norman Rappaport and, uh, and uh, uh, for e mixed characteristic is uh, Harris Taylor and yeah, around 2000. Okay, uh, geometric Langlands actually suggests the local class correspondence can and probably needs to be lifted to an equivalent categories. Because in the previous, this formulation of natural bijection for groups other than GON, of course, there's a lot of considerations, a bunch of conditions it should satisfy. But it's still, I mean, I don't think there's like really a good way to formulate characterize, for example, this uh, bijection. So uh, actually, Probably one really not just uh, can and probably need to be categorified for local elements. So also there's some actually 
already some evidence for a long time, for example, both sides had some geometric structure. On the representation first side, there's a Bernstein center. Like, so basically representation of periodic groups form families, blocks. And then on the Galois side, there's a, like a deformation rings or et cetera. So people studied this before, but somehow only at the like coarse modular space level. So, uh, so recently there's a algebraic stack of local Langlands parameters, let's say over the L was constructed by uh, various people. Uh, and uh, this is really, this classifies all the, uh, let's say continuous homomorphism from the way group to uh, G, G hat ZL up to conjugation. And here I use C, G, this is like uh, the, the so-called C group. Of, it's a slight variant of, uh, uh, Langlands two group LG. So one thing is it allows you to define something over ZL, but I guess more important for me is this notation, it fits nice better in the subscript if you use LL. LG is like, a, it's a little bit more ugly. Okay, anyway, so there's such stack, it's quite reasonable. Uh, it's really algebraic stack locally of finite presentation of those ZL is like there are infinitely many irreducible components, connect component. I'll talk about one component actually later on. So I'm not to talk about details about it now. But anyway, the uh, in local Langlands, we should replace set of Langlands parameters by the category of coherent shifts on this algebraic stack. So here I emphasize arithmetic local Langlands because uh, there's also this, of course, geometric local Langlands, which originally already categorical and actually it's too categorical. Okay. Uh, so what, the, what is this representation theory side if you want to categorize the class of local lines? There are, uh, originally one would think about just derive the category of uh, smooth representation for a periodic group, but this is quite not, not quite enough. Okay. So in, even in the classic point of view, we already said instead of in, to study local elements, one need to study representation of G of F and probably it's inner forms, various version. But arithmetic geometry suggests that uh, actually one to study representation of GF, one need to study a bunch of groups called JBF arising from the Cartwright set BG. So, because Lauren Fark gave some talking, you know, this kind of thing already appears quite uh, a lot in this conference, so I don't want me to repeat it. But uh, in, in addition, the categories, these categories can be glued together by the category of shifts, certain op geometric objects. Of course, we heard on Monday, like Brax and Schultz's approach to this is to study the, some category of shifts on this bang G, which is bang G is like this module of G bang, some kind of V stack of G bundles on the uh, Frax Fontaine curve. But today I'm going to talk about an alternative approach, which is in more in tr traditional algebraic geometry. So, this, okay, so this category I would say called local Langlands category. There's like some, uh, this approach, I think, uh, this gets great, like in a couple of years ago, like outline, give some informal account of how to define such category. Around the same time, Liang Xiao and I be motivated by considering like more people point fibers of Shimura variety would give some kind of other definition. Both these two works are like these two constructions are in inspired by, I guess, work of Winston La Fork. So not surprisingly at the end, they are they turn, turn out to be the same definition. And the, now the, we like with T, uh, Tamir, we work on all the details and uh, some foundational properties of this category. Okay, so uh, so let me uh, introduce some like uh, uh, standard notations. So we have OF is the ring of integers, fix uh, a uniformizer, and the KF is the residue field of Q elements, sigma, let me denote the Q for business. And uh, for a uh, perfect KLR, we have this, uh, with vectors 
truncated ve vectors with coefficient in O. So it's just W R tensor over W K F of R. Uh, 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 of uh, WR tensor with WKF of, R, uh, of, uh, of OF mm. modulo this pi to the n. Do you know this to spec of this? Is, we think about it's like a disk parameters by spec R, and this puncture disk. And we define the loop group to be just a, a functor from whose R point is G of uh, this ring. Okay, the, so the the sections from the puncture disk to G. And we fix a coefficient Q, L, Z, L, F, L, or any algebraic extension of it. So then in this approach, we define the so-called the Cotwitz stack as the loop group modulo the uh, Frobenius conjugation of the loop group. First of all, we take the, we just take, we take the etalsification of this pre-stack portion so uh, explicitly, this is that it assigns a perfect K F algebra R, the groupoid consisting of a G torsor on this uh, punctured disk, together with the isomorphism of this G torsor with its Frobenius pullback, this pullback sigma R. Sigma R is a, sorry, I should go to here, is a, it, it only acts on this, uh, uh, it only acts, it acts on R, okay. Okay, and the, we add an additional requirement that this G torsor can be trivialized over, uh, it's G torsor over here, this function is, and then can be trivialized over here for some et al covering map R to R prime. So uh, I should remark that not every G torsor can be trivial on here on this disk, disk parameterized by R can be trivialized over the disk parameterized by R prime, the puncture disk for an etal covering. Okay, so this is a really requir requirement. It can be trivialized over some V cover, but somehow for us, I mean, I should say later on we will define some category of shifts on this geometric object to define the category of shifts. If, there's actually, there's no need to shiftify. You can just define as pre-stack, but the really to study some property, for example, to relate it to some other geometric object, one needs to shiftify it somehow. Uh, the minimal shiftification we need is a tau, because then in practice, all this torsors actually comes from disk, not punctured disk. So then they can be trivialized to, over some et al covering of R. Uh, so, so this is sort of something minim minimal thing to do if you wanna really see something about geometry of it. Uh, so that's what we do. We, in principle, we could also take some V cover, but uh, the time when we define some inconstructible, some, some category of shifts, we're not quite sure about like the V descent, uh, the descent properties with respect to V cover. So we safely state here. So the etal descent uh, using etal cover. I imagine taking V cover should be also okay, but uh, anyway, it's enough for our purpose to just do the etal shiftification. Okay, for every se separably closed field, uh, capital K, the set of isomorphism class of this group point is just the Cotwitz set, actually it's a post set BG. So it's classifying like, uh, G of uh, F brave, F brave is uh, like completion of maximum unramified extension of F. It's classifying sigma conjugate class in this uh, G of uh, F brave. So for an element B in this set, one can consider some uh, sub, let's say sub, let me call just pre stacks. These are just, uh, you know, functors from category of perfect KF algebras to group points. So consider some, there's some sub pre stack where this BG less than or equal to B consists of those pairs E and the phi. So E is a, is a, is a, you know, it's a G bundle on this uh, punctured disk and the phi is uh, isomorphism with, with this Frobenius pullback. And we require it's, uh, the associate uh, 
uh, B of is less than or equal to this given B at every point. And then we de one defines uh, how to with B, G, B is uh, the, the complement of those uh, of this. Okay, so uh, this is just definition, but actually there's some ge geometry one can see. One can, one can say about it. First of all, is this, in, this embedding, this map, is a finitely presented closed embedding. It's actually proved by Rappaport and Rick Charles, which means if you map from spec R to it, namely if you have a, such family, then the locus of X lands inside the here is actually a closed subset in spec R, and this closed subset can be defined uh, uh, by uh, finite many equations, let's say up to perfection, up to perfection can be defined by finite many equations. And you know, there's it's strong, slightly stronger than finite many equations, but okay, something like that. And then uh, this part, this uh, uh, called BG of B is uh, open inside the here, actually. It's not just open, it's an affine open embedding. So this is really this growth and purity. And it's, Basically, proof of Wasu and Harto and Vim. So, in particular, the minimal element in caught with set BG, which are called basic element, for those minimal set element, these two are the same, and it's actually closed in BG. Okay, so this at the moment, you know, this B of G is really some wild uh, animal in the algebraic geometry, but uh, these maps are actually mixed really reasonably good. Anyway, nevertheless, this is not a, any algebraic stack in the usual sense. One can still define the category shifts on it. So in, in this now is a, there's sort of some, uh, so let me just uh, outline how this is defined. Just a, so first of all, for every K out, let's, let me fix the base field K. Then for every key algebra R, one can first define the category of shifts on spec R as, uh, as follows. It, you first write R as a uh, inductive limit of finitely presented K algebra. And then on spec Ri, there's a, this is like, a, see, a, an affine scheme of finite type over K. And then there's a perfect notion of a, constructible shift of a finite whole dimension defined by the name, which basically it's this is constructible, but each stock is a perfect complex, something like that. So then you take all the inductive limit. So let me denote this by shifts of construct on spec R. And then define the shifts on spec R with coefficient lambda as the incompletion of it. Oh, by the way, I should See this uh, connective morphism under this direct limit is given by Schrick, upper Schrick go back. So when lambda is actually finite, this category action does not depend on your choice of base field K. It's basically the con this DCTF on spec R, but up to, up, up to taking some due. So here I use Schrick pullback rather than star pullback. But the but for coefficient like ZL, this category does really depend on the base field K. So that's the reason I choose a different note, like sub, put subs, different subscript here. So let me just give, for example, if you take R to be the function field of a curve over little K, let's say little K is algebraic, even algebraic close or whatever, it doesn't matter. So this guy as defined, you know, it comes from uh, shifts on spec Ri. Ri is a finite type over K. So it must be some open, it comes from some, so this object here actually comes from some open subset of X. So this category actually is a rep continuous representations of this Galois group of the function field, but it must be unramified almost everywhere. But this category is just this D of CTF, it's just all the continuous representation of gamma. It, this is in, uh, you know, in this de or usual definition of, this uh, DCTF, there's no base field involved. So it's all continuous representation. But this guy, so for finite coefficient, it doesn't matter whether we choose a base field K or not. But the, for ZL coefficient, it has some 
uh, one needs to be careful. Okay, anyway, once we have defined such categories for every K algebra R, we can define a category for every, what's called a pre-stack, which basically is just a, a functor. Maybe I should say perfect pre-stack. It's a functor from the category perfect K algebras to any. So this is like the notation is used by uh, Klaus and Schalter. It's just spaces, infinite category spaces. So the definition is given by a uh, shift sum X lambda is just taking the inverse limit of shift sum spec R lambda for all the maps spec R2. So you, you can take the inverse limit. And uh, be, just because of the definition, okay, again, the connecting morphisms are given by upper shrink pullback. And the, just because of definition, there's this uh, upper shrink pullback functors between this category of shifts. And all, but on the other hand, one can also define the lower star push forward for finite, finite presented representable morphisms, satisfying a base change property like a lower star push forward and the upper shrink pullback to satisfy some base change properties for Cartesian square. So, okay, so there's such definition, but the, for general X, there's this is re really, there's nothing one can say about it. It's just, it's just a defined abstract category. We know nothing about it. And there's these two defined functors, but the other than that, uh, we don't know much about it. So, so for some special X, we will see we could see more, but the, for example, there's some adjoint functors for upper shrink or lower star, upper shrink pullback or lower star push forward. So, but anyway, in any case, we do have, we do give a definition. Okay, although it's very quick definition, but we do give a definition of this category of shifts on these spaces and some, uh, a bunch of functors uh, between them, because I said the I lower B and the JB, these are like, a, Finite presented morphisms, so so we do have that lower star functor. Okay, uh, but uh, nevertheless, although the, the the definition of category of shifts on the pre stack is pretty general at the wild, in this particular case of Cotwitz stack, one can the category is actually very nice, and uh, you you can see many things about it. Uh, so this is some, let me summarize some properties of this category. So it's quite, I guess, parallel to uh, this D Li Spang G developed by uh, uh, Frax and Schalter, but of course the proofs are kind of different to establish this property. First of all, if you restrict to each little b, I have this uh, locally closed uh, sub stack. Uh, BGB, this is uh, actually the category of shifts on that is equivalent to the category of uh, representations of this uh, uh, locally compact, this PRD group JB with coefficient lambda. And uh, uh, I should see, because we are taking a tau shiftification, this category is not the same as uh, like the classifying stack of this this locally compact group using, let's say, some, some kind of, I mean, there's a, uh, there's a little bit difference, but again, the category of shifts are still okay. Then there are adjoint functors between this uh, different strata, just like this is, because this is like open inside here, this is a closing, uh, and this is a closed complement. So you can define a bunch of adjoint functors just like the usual, you have an open and close of a scheme. You have the, and then they induce an orthogonal decomposition, similar orthogonal decomposition of this category. The category is compact generated and the compact objects are in those whose restriction, let's say star restriction to each strata is compact inside here. And it's zero for almost all B. And there's a self-duality functor. Uh, this, is, this category is sort of self-dual and the, which uh, this is 
we call d -Koch. It intertwines this uh, usual cohomological duality or maybe called the bernstein zipanesky duality on represent category of representation of periodic groups. So, but it, 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 it's, it's sort of, it does interchange upper uh, lower shriek push forward and a lower stop push forward and up to some shifts. And then there's some uh, T structure. So, so this is a really nice category. I mean, as nice as you can imagine. And it's really is a, a glued from all these uh, category of representations of JB. For some special Pre-stacks one can also define the constructible category of constructible shifts. Let, uh, let me not give the precise definition in this case. In fact, uh, I mean, some four stacks of BG, one can make a definition, but uh, I don't know whether it's really reasonable. In any case, in this case, we can basically, you can think about, let us define the constructible shifts on cut weight stacks as follows. First of all, an element in uh, an object, a shift on BG is constructible. Let me call it constructible. If it's a restriction to each strat Newton strata, it's constructible and a zero for almost all Bs. And on this Newton strata, it's constructible. If it, if under this equivalent, the, the shifts on this Newton strata is just a representation of JB. So I call it constructible if it's uh, basically finite generated. Namely, it's a, it's a finite it's generated by those uh, representations that is compact induction from some open compact subgroup K to JB. Okay, so this is a, if lambda is a field of characteristic zero, actually this, this, this coincides with compact object in a, in a here, but the, for let's say if lambda is a FL coefficient, it's slightly different. Okay, with all these definitions, now let me just uh, state a version of a uh, categorical version, conjectural categorical version of uh, uh, local London's correspondence. It, it predicts there's a canonical equivalence of infinite categories between the coherent shifts on this uh, stack of London's parameters. Here, lambda means base, the original this stack is defined over ZL, and I base chain to lambda. There's equivalence of categories between this of coherent shifts on this stack and the constructible shifts on, on Cotwitz stack, Compact, satisfying certain compatibility conditions and the, some co so-called Whitaker normalization. Uh, so this, if you, I mean, this is slightly different from uh, what the uh, Laurent mentioned among, I mean, okay, so let, let, before I say that, let me say it like this. So there was, of course, on Monday, uh, there was this conjecture of Fox and Schalter, with very similar conjecture, but with, as I said, with this category replaced by this category of uh, uh, shifts on Bangji, they, they like constructed. And uh, you, but the, in, in their conjecture, there's still a little bit different this on the left-hand side, the coherent side, they put some singular support condition. The reasons being here, I use constructible uh, compared with compact object. So uh, I think if you just uh, use constructible shifts, we don't need to put singular support condition here. Okay, so th if there's such equivalence, then the category of vector bundles on this stack would act on this category by tensoring. This was not, this is not known currently. Like, of course, one of the big thing in this, uh, one of the big things is uh, Frax Schultz's work is actually constructed this spectral action of the perf on this uh, uh, DDs. But, but the, in this, if we use this category as sort of our local elements category, this is not known. But nevertheless, there's some com convincing evidence that this formulation should also be something correct. So, it somehow this category and the, uh, the category constructed by uh, Frags and Schultz should be somehow, it should be equivalent, but I guess uh, probably we don't know that yet. Anyway, so, so let me, so I would, uh, I guess 
the main purpose is just to tell you some evidence why this is also should be something reasonable. So let me now assume G is unramified. So namely it's quasi split group and the split over an unramified extension of F. We fix a penny, so a Borel in G, a maximum torus in Borel and the E is sort of, E you can think about it's a map from a uh, non-degenerate map from uh, the uniform radical of B to G A. So it's a, like, a, and let's fix a Psi, uh, I didn't, uh, yeah, I think I introduced this thing, this conjecture fix a penny and the Psi is a, it's a non-trivial additive character, uh, a non-trivial character, additive character. Uh, so we can define a subcategory in this category of constructible shifts on Cotwood stack, which we call shifts on unipotent. These are those shifts are here, such as for each B, when we restrict this to, uh, to the Newton strata, it's a representation of JB, and we require this, this unipotent in the sense of Lustig, which means all the cohomology shifts, all the cohomology, which are representations of JB, appears as a sub quotient of representation of this type. You take some parahoric subgroup of JB, you do, and the cuspital representation of, of the Levy quotient of P, and take this compact induction, and this guy should appear as a sub quotient here. So let me just men mention this Levy quotient of a parahoric is a finite group of D type. So uh, there's notion of cus unipotent cuspital representation of a finite group of D-type according to this linguistic theory. Okay. Uh, so this is actually for at the representation level it was defined by Lustig. Uh, and he basically gave a classification of unipotent representation in terms of Langland's parameters. So we define this category such that it's basically glued from each various a unipotent representation for each JB. Let me just mention you can de actually define a version called tame version, which you require each restriction is depth, depth zero representation, like this depth zero block JB. So, uh, so this is basically we select out this category, subcategory. On the other hand, on the uh, uh, Galois side, uh, we have this uh, stack of Langland's parameters. Inside it, we have this tame part and the unipotent part, which classifying representations factor through the tame quotient of the way group or those, the, the inertia, uh, the, the monodrome is unipotent. So, so if we fix the uh, topological generator of the tame inertia, then the, the uh, 10 part of the, the stack of London's parameter can be represented as uh, two elements. One is in G, which is like 10, in, 10, unipo, un, 10 monodrome, H is probinus, and the satisfies condition up to G hat conjugation. And also you can define the, uh, inside it, it has a unipotent part of which where you require G to be the a unipotent element. So, uh, so this, this sub stack is always open and closed inside here, and even over ZL. Uh, the unipotent part is uh, more tricky. I mean, it's, I think it's only well behaved over QL. Over ZL, maybe it's not a good thing to actually consider, just consider the unipotent part. For example, the, 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 the deformation theory of this stack is not controlled by Galois cohomology, so it's a little bit, uh, I mean, but, uh, uh, but anyway, over QL, this is open and closed inside here. It's basically a connected component. So it's okay to consider it. All right, so uh, now the theorem is, uh, uh, main theorem is uh, actually there's a equivalence categories between coherent shifts on this unipotent uh, stack of unipotent local uh, Langlands parameters. And then the, the unipotent part of this uh, shifts as both parameters. 
and it satisfies certain vertical normalization. Okay, so uh, the theorems obtained, like the method is taking the Frobenius twisted categorical trace of Bezukov-Nikov's equivalence between two versions of the F and Heck category. So maybe later on, I mean, at the end, if I have time, I'll briefly mention it. But, the, uh, but the, at the moment, let me just mention that the, the, the categorical taking care, using categorical trace method is not something really new in representation theory, the idea. The, it at least exists for more than 10 years, like the work of Benz V. Uh, company of Finkelberg, Austrick, Lustig, uh, Gatesbury, and uh, the work with Liang Xiaowei. This idea was already used before, but we just uh, go a little bit further to, to uh, actually compute both sides, and uh, in particular on this uh, representation theory side. Okay. Uh, so let me just uh, Mentioned that Bezukov-Nikov's equivalence is, uh, it says the, there's equivalence of categories between one is uh, this uh, uh, between two different between this one is category of coherent sheets on the Steinberg variety of the Langlands two group, the unipotent Steinberg variety of Langlands two group, which is defined as uh, uh, so. First of all, we have a G hat, and this U tilde G hat is a Springer resolution. Which basically is given by a elements here are pairs. One is a unipotent element and a for real subgroup containing that unipotent element. And we take the Steinberg variety as uh, the self fiber product over G hat. And uh, let me, I wrote L here to emphasize actually this uh, one needs to take the derived tensor product because this map actually is not, uh, this map is. Uh, I mean, send the unipotent element to for real to just the unipotent element. This is far from being flat map. It's, you know, the, the images are just the U hat, like the unipotent elements here. So you, one needs to take the derived tensor product. And the Beskov Nikov's equivalence is there's equivalence categories between this. And another thing is certain category constructible shifts on the, on the, on the stack of uh, by Iwahori by equivalent shifts on the loop group G. So as a monoidal equivalence of monoidal category, this is quite important. And the sigma equivalence is here. The sigma comes from the Frobenius action. And here there's sigma. Let's say if, if the group is split, sigma acts on here by just the rescale the uh, element of un, the unipotent element by multiplying by Q taking Q's power, something like that. Okay. Uh, I should give two remarks. So Beskov Nikov proves this equivalence in equal characteristic, but actually there's a way to deduce the mixed characteristic version from the equal characteristic version. And there's actually also a tame version of this equivalence. So instead of consider just a unipotent part, you consider the, the full Steinberg some kind of full Steinberg. And here, you, instead of con just consider the uh, Iwahori, by Iwahori invariant equivalent shifts, you allow some monodromy along, uh, along torus part. So this the previous theorem, I would say it's not, I mean, I could not say completely sure, but probably could be further push replacing unipotent by 10 sometime in the future. Okay, but the, anyway, at the moment, it's just, uh, we have this unipotent part. So, uh, but, so, okay, so far so good. We have the equivalence categories, but there's uh, just two, something kind of abstract. So if you wanna really wanna have some applications, you need to see something concrete and how objects are matched under this equivalence. So let me introduce uh, on the Galois side, let me first introduce the so-called spectral denlustic stacks. So the unipotent, there's a map from the stack of unipotent 
non-nonz parameter to g hat mod g hat by just remember the monodromy of the tam inertia. So it, the, its image maps actually to the unipotent variety mod g j. And then I take the fiber product with this uh, Gaussian Springer resolution. So basically, it, this this stack classifies the triples where G and H is a unipotent parameter. So G is a unipotent, H is like the image of Frobenius. And then uh, B hat prime is a Borel containing G. Okay. But the, then there's another map from this stack to, there's a map, another map from this stack to this U tilde G hat, mod G hat. It sends this triple to basically, uh, G, this unipotent element, this Borel, and the, the conjugation of this Borel by, uh, by Frobenius. So recall the Steinberg varieties classifying triple uh, the element in the Borel, unipotent element and the two Borels containing that unipotent element. So, so there's such a map. And uh, 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 so let me, let me recall a little bit about the geometry of the Steinberg variety. It's, it's actually, it's not uh, irreducible, right? Let's, okay, let's do, ignore the derived structure. The underlying variety, it's, uh, it's not irreducible. It's irreducible components are cl class parameterized by finite wild well group. And basically look at, look by looking at the relative position of two boreals. For example, if the two boreals coincide that correspond to W equals one. In any way, for each dub, any case, for each W, we can define a part of the unit, this Steinberg right, and take this fiber product, which we call this uh, uh, log tilde unipotent W, G, uh, C, G, W. Okay, so it's basically uh, classifying the pairs of uh, a unipotent parameter, a borel such that after conjugation of this Borel by Frobenius, they, they have the relative position W. So I will give some more concrete examples later. So then we have this map just to forget the Borel. And uh, uh, so for every element in BG, let, let me just do basic element in BG, there's a, element WB in the Iwahori wild group whose sigma conjugate class represents this B. This, this WB is in this extended Iwahori wild group, which is semi, can be written as a semi product of a co-weight lattice and a finite wild group. So I can further decompose this WB as a, as a lambda B, which is a co-weight written in a, it's an anti-dominant co-weight and the WBF is a finite wild group, so finite wild in the W. Then the theorem is under the previous equivalence categories, this coherent shift actually corresponds to uh, delta IB. Record this delta IB is, is the compact induction of the trivial representation from the Iwahori, uh, from IB, which is the Iwahori of JB to JB. So this is a, this is a, a representation of uh, JB and the, we identify the shift on the uh, uh, Newton strata BGB, and then we take this push forward. And under this push forward, uh, it corresponds to this co a little bit com com complex, uh, uh, this coherent shift. So here, this lambda B is a, is, is a, is a co-character, is a, is a, is a co-weight co of, uh, of G, so it's a, weight of the uh, London of, of T hat, the London two torus, we regard it as weight of B hat. So this, this lambda actually define the line bundle on here. So maybe I should go back here uh, to mention how this line bundle is coming from. So here I take the fiber product uh, as follows, but actually you can replace this uh, multiplicative uh, Springer you can replace this u tilde mod g hat by u hat mod g hat, uh, mod b hat, where u hat is uh, just, uh, b hat is a boreal and u hat is a unipotent radical boreal. You can re replace that. So then, so 
then it's this is like something modulo b hat. So a, a character of b hat defines a line bundle on here. So you can define some line bundle on here, and then you push forward to to the unicorn stack that corresponds to this representation. Actually, one can generalize this to not just the such there's some sub formula holds not just for basic b it holds for every b if you use some work of shu ha he so let me give some example this is if w is one so i mean the w is an element in the final wall group if it's one let's go back to uh here this definition of the spectral diagnostic stack what does it mean that means uh I have a unipotent parameter, and uh, then a Borel containing G, and uh, and uh, then you want this uh, B hat prime and the, its conjugation by H, they are the same. This is precisely when H itself is in this B hat prime. So in other words, this G and the H are both in B hat prime. So that's basically the map of Galois group, the way group to B hat prime. So it's it's a so when W is one, this is exactly the the uh, modular space of uh, maps from uh, modular space of representations of way group to the uh, the London B hat or maybe C B. But you require the time inertia map to the unicorn element. And in this case, uh, we write this push forward just from here to a lock of CG to be, this is what I call, call coherent Springer shift. And uh, uh, so, in particular, for B is one, for in the previous theorem, if B is one, then this WB is just one and this uh, WBF is just one. So in this case, you obtain under the equivalence, the coherent Springer shift exactly correspond to the induced representation of the Iwahori to GF. As a corollary, the Iwahori, the F and Hecke algebra, which is endomorphism, this guy, is also the endomorphism of this uh, coherent sh Springer shift. I should mention that, uh, okay, so this equivalence is at, everything's at the derived level, but in characteristic zero, uh, there's no derived endomorphism of uh, the derived endomorphism of uh, this uh, uh, compact induction is just uh, concentrated on degree zero. So you do get this. So for split groups, this is actually also proved by Ben Chen, Hillman, and Edner, and uh, Hillman, Hillman for GSG2. And for the same thing, one can do compute the, the spherical Hick algebra here, a case of hyperspatial subgroup. It's a derived endomorphism of unramified structure shifts of unramified component inside the unipotent component. So this is kind of highly singular thing. And then you just take an irreducible component, take its endomorphism a priori, there are gonna be some higher X to group, but it turns out there's no such thing. Okay. Uh, right, so another example is we consider, just for some reason, consider G is PGL2, W is a simple reflection. In this case, what is it, what is this, this classifying again, a unipotent parameter and a Borel, such that the, the forbidden, the, the, forbidden, the conjugation of the Borel by the forbiddenness is not itself. So, over the Steinberg component, which means uh, the unipotent element is non-trivial, then the Borel is actually already uh, is uniquely determined, and then this Borel is actually uh, 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 somehow this, okay. This is birational. Okay, S is see the problem. Is you want to S and the conjugation of uh, of Borel by the forbiddenness is not the same of Borel. This is just a general condition. You need to also take some closure. So, so anyway, the Steinberg component, this map is birational. And on the unramified component here, this map is 
basically uh, generically a P1 vibration. So uh, namely if, if unipotent is trivial, so you can, there's a given S, uh, yeah, you have all possible choice of for rails. So that's a generically, uh, you, the whole for flag variety choice of for rails. So it's P1. So uh, if in particular, if you take B to be this uh, uh, non-trivial basic element, so JB is a quaternion algebra, basically quaternion algebra, module the center. Then the line bundle actually, when you restrict to those P1s are O minus one bundle. So when you push forward, all the cohomology vanishes. So this shift actually only support on the Steinberg component and it's a self do Cohen-Macaulay shift. I should mention this, this shift, this integral version of this appears in this Jeff Manning's work using, it appears in the patch method uh, to start the cohomology modular curves uh, or Shimura curves, whatever. Uh, I should say this is not a, a coincidence. Actually, there's some conjectural relation between these coherent shifts and the cohomology of the let's say, general Shimura varieties. Okay, so here's a sample application. So, uh, of this sort of theorem, but the, uh, I mean, it's I just keep a flavor what can be done if you want to write on some more. It's just, you know, notation is so complicated if you want to do more general thing. So I just say the sample thing is that you can take a Shimura variety of adjoint type, adjoint Shimura data of Albanian type, let's say unramified as P, take some open compact with KP Wahori, take the inner form G prime, that is the same as G outside the P and infinity, at infinity, G prime is compact and at P you need to specify it a little bit. Uh, but I, 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 let me ignore that. I mean, it's basically this J of uh, B, something like that. Choose theta, which is isomorphism of these two groups away from P and the infinity, compatible with the inner twist and uh, take a uh, open compact of G prime to be K prime with k prime p you are for and k prime upper p uh, transferred from k upper p. Then there's this Jackie London transfer. You, if you you can you can have uh, any map of coherent shifts on this stack gives a map of uh, space of automorphic forms. Here Sh Shimura mu is a more p fiber of the corresponding Shimura varieties. Uh, this shift is what I this shift is what I just mentioned before for B, which is a basic element in this Cotwood set. And the, here V2 does this vector bundle on the stack corresponding to the highest representation of minus mu. This is a coherent spring or shift. So you have this kind of thing. So this is a sort of the uh, applications. Uh, let me at the end how mention how this is proved this categorical trace I mentioned before. So, uh, because of the time, I'll be probably a little bit sketch. So for any algebra, let's just think about this algebra and the, or chain complex of algebras, this well-known notion of a, a good partial homology, the algebra. It's, you can, okay. So actually this can be defined for any bi, a bi modules, but the, or consider a special case when this algebra is equipped, equipped with the endomorphism of C, then I can think about A as a, uh, a bi module with one action, let's say with the right action just given by multiplication, but the left ad action given by uh, twisted multiplication, twisted by this C. Then this Hochschild homology is usually computed by the so called uh, bar resolution. So you reserve A as by A by module and then do this tensor. So you can explicitly write on this uh, uh, complex computed Hochschild homology. Uh, such definition makes sense for action for any algebra object in a symmetric monodal category with some milder conditions. In particular, 
you can take A to be a monoidal category and define the corresponding Hausch homology, which is another category. So in this, so this ambient symmetric monoid category is basically the category of categories with some like, more precisely it's like lambda linear presentable categories with equipped with Lewis tensor product. Then you can take it the uh, Hausch homology, which is also called the categorical trace. So, I mean, this is just definition very general. It's hard to see anything concrete with uh, this uh, definition if given any let's say after a monoidal category but the in representation theory such a usually comes from the following so-called the convolution pattern you have a map from x to y some geometric object and some shift theory so then you can consider x times x over y so it's kind of and then this shift the category of shifts on it usually has some monoidal structure given by you have the shifts on here and the shifts on here, you pull back and the push forward. So it's a monoidal structure. And uh, for example, in Beskopnikov's equivalence, actually the spectral side, uh, you take the unipotent variety. Uh, oh, sorry, I, this is, should be U tilde, this growth and extreme resolution modulo G hat, module map to G hat modulo G hat. And then you take the shift theory to be coherent shift. On the representation theory side, you take X to be the classifying stack of your Hori map to the classifying stack of a loop group. And you take the shift theory to be the elastic shift, a constructible shift. Okay, so in this particular case, this trace, categorical trace of this category actually can usually be accessed by the bottom diagram. Here is the top diagram is the uh, top map is this bar resolution I mentioned before. But the, the bottom thing is, um, is some kind of relative bar resolution. You, now you can think about this algebra object in the category of uh, DY, mod, DY modules. So you do this relative bar resolution, and do a little ma manipulation. Actually here, this is you just take the check nerve of X mapped to Y and the base change to L phi Y. Here L phi Y is a fixed space of the fixed points of Y. So it's an intersection of a diagonal and the graph of phi Y in Y times Y. Okay, so then one just use this to compute both sides of this company equivalence. In fact, the spectral side was already computed by Benzway Nadan and a pre build like a couple of years ago. At least the over, let's say, coefficients over QL. You can also do ZL. Anyway, so but let's just focus on spec representation theory side. So first of all, the first observation is that like the Frobenius, like fixed point of B of loop group is just the BG, the cut cut with stack. Here I put, should put a tau here, so so a tau classifying stack. But then we want to look at the, what is this? Uh, what is this uh, uh, here? It's a uh, X times this fixed point over Y. So X in the case is classifying stack of Iwahori. So it's classifying stack of Iwahori times this fixed point over B of Y. And then the take the fiber product is, turns out it's nothing, it's something people know before. It's just a loop group modulo for Venus Sigma conjugation of Iwahori after a tau shiftification. And there's another, let me call it the, uh, denoted by sheet lock and explicitly classifying the following things the G torsor on the disk together with the modification. So, some people put people would call it the Stuka, but this is some local version actually started by uh Genesta Lafour. My paper was Shaw and we maybe Hardo and uh, Feynman, but like people start this kind of space before. And then the projection, it's nothing but it's just the Newton map by restricting the G torsor from the disk to the punctured disk. Okay, then the, the check nerve of this Newton map is given by the, uh, what I call iterated local 
hex stack. It's just a bunch of bundles with modification, and the last one and the first one are to, uh, related to by Frobenius twist. So now the key fact along one do do everything is the uh, this map is improper. The fibers looks like because this is the LG module of Frobenius conjugation of Iwahori, and this is the LG module of Frobenius conjugation by itself. So the fibers are just looks like the F and flag variety of LG module of Iwahori. It's improper. So then you can just use uh, some descent to uh, to get this co-simplicial diagram, actually it's a co-limit co diagram. So this guy is really the co-limit of your previous thing. And the, the nice thing is this, all these stacks are actually kind of, it's again, they are not algebraic stack in the usual sense, but they, are, they can be approximated by algebraic stack so people can study it. So, okay, so because of the time limit, just give one finish really quick. We can use this to study this category of shears. For example, we can compute the home, the Y base changes given by uh, the home of the two like shifts from here, push forward here is, can be computed as a, you have a shift here, pull back and then compute the home there. So this is, in some sense, this definition was given by uh, Shaw, and, Shaw and myself before. And also when, because there's some verdict duality on each thing here, you can deduce this cohomology duality. Okay, uh, so because of the time, let me skip. Thank you. Thank you for the great talk. Are there questions? So, so in your work, you usually work with this uh, CG instead of this Langlands dual group, and I always wonder, I mean, what, why, and what does it make? What difference does it make in the end that you use the CG instead of the AG um, group? As I mentioned, given the talk, the real difference is CG fixed nicely in the subscript. Well, well but sure, but I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean there's a uh, it's. If you see if one can define everything over ZL, I think that's a, a bill is a more, slight more canonical, but I don't think there's like oh, really okay. substantial yeah, difference. Then, okay, I see. Yeah. Um, the other question I had, so you introduced this, so I mean, there's this Delis Spongy story in Falken Scholze, and then you have your category of uh, sheaves on this um, BG. And is there any possibility or hope to compare these two or is this beyond reach? I think it's, uh, there should be a possible way. I think I discussed a little bit this with uh, Peter some time ago. There might be some way, but I mean, I guess it's just not done yet, I guess. Hopefully, it's uh, some sometime. Okay. So actually, there are also some questions in the chat, um, also from during your talk. Um, I don't know if it's possible for you to scroll a little bit. Uh. Where, yeah, there's some. Uh, is it possible to phrase the usual geometric elements in the shape? Uh, I mean, the local geometric elements actually is a statement of two categories, equivalent to two categories, so it's kind of too abstract, I guess. Uh, maybe. There's a question from Roman Trovkin about taking categorical trace with respect to GM. In the loop? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, I mean, if you, okay, G, the general GM, I don't know, but if you just take the identity, you will, you will get something like the really at, at equivalent, you should add on the equivalent shapes on the loops, loop groups. That's kind of some, some should be something like the character shapes for loop group. But I guess the geometry there is, a, I mean, somehow taking Frobenius traces make things much simpler, like geometry become much simpler. But the, taking even, for example, you take the identity, then it's kind of, a, one can define something, but it's really hard to study. Geometries, like the category of shifts, I think one needs to impose certain finiteness condition, like some kind of singular support on the category of constructible shifts to go further, but I don't know. All right. Um, the, there's a question about the global Jacquet Langlands map from Paul Van Hoften. I mean, the, this one, uh, I, the, the problem is, okay, one needs to go to deeper level structure for to talk about the Igus. If you go to Igus, I mean, the Igus are variety at the, if you just level at the Iwahore, I think that's very, something very interesting. I mean, there is something, but usually people want to go higher, higher towers, and then you need to go to deeper level, then once the, I should say the problem is, then if you go to deeper level, uh, the problem is I don't, I don't understand the, what is this kind of thing is shift. So if there's such thing could be understood, then it, in principle, it should be possible. Well, I guess your conjecture with uh, Liang Zhao about the existence of these uh, exotic correspondences implies some um, some uh, exotic isomorphisms of the Gusev varieties, but that's in the case that the groups are the same at P. Uh, right. There we only discuss groups the same at P. Uh, here, I mean, this is easy because I basically is representing uniformization, so I could take two. if. Uh, Otherwise, one still need to, I mean, to get from this local to global, there's actually two things. One is to this, uh, all this local stuff is traced, but then globally, you need to construct physical correspondence between different Shimura varieties. Ah, I see, okay. Well, yeah, uh, in this case, something, I mean, everywhere on, in the unramified case, it can be, down in general, but uh, for the Yuahora, I think you probably have something. But, uh, but uh, I guess still there's some works to do actually to get the physical correspondences. Okay, thank you. Sorry, so just to clarify, were you saying that there is a version of this theorem where you don't assume that the group is compact at infinity, but there's still some But there's still, then you need to impose, for, let's see, G and G prime, then for example, it's a required, they are just to be on the same end of P. Yeah, then we can pass from the hyperspatial to Iwahori using this, uh, you know, pause work just there's some cheap way to do that but the, if you genuinely want to do groups different at a p I, there's some work i think one needs to really work to physically construct the construct the physical correspondences first thank you yeah thanks uh i I had a question about the relation to this more classical world of Kastian and Lustig and so on. I mean, I read this paper of Ben Zvi, Chen, Helm, and Nadler, and I think there they, as far as I remember, like in this work of Kastian and Lustig, they don't get in general all the representations with the desired L parameters, but only some of them. 
And this is the phenomenon you also see here, or do you somehow get all the representations? You, you really? get the, here. Is, you definitely get all the representation. The reason they only get the part of it is they only capture this uh, FF uh, you are for a hick algebra. It, this uh, uh, this uh, I should say this uh, the only basically the only get what they do is basically they only do this. And then uh -huh. you can map all the modules of the Iwahora Hick algebra, right? You localize all the modules on the Iwahora Hick algebra to the stack of unknown parameters. But of course, there's something, let's say, even in the unipotent case, there's some unipotent parameter which has some, some super cuspid representation could have the unipotent parameter. So, uh -huh. but those don't have Iwahora fixed vector. So, you won't see this is not enough. But uh, everything will be captured is ca captured here in this equivalence. So everything is already set here. So when you come actually compute the categorical trace on the geometric side, how do you um, see that you get this unipotent category there? So this is a uh, so this what happens is uh, uh, this the Yuahori part actually only comes from the unit. We have a uh, I should see this basic this this picture. Hmm. Yeah, here's this picture. How do you get trace? If just let's ignore all this uh, check nerve, just consider the first term. If x times x to y, then what you can do is you can pull back to. So this is basically uh, I equivalent by equivalent shifts on the loop group. So the Hick category, you pull back to the module of local Shitokas, push push forward to BG. So this is back to here. So if you do just do unit one, go back to here, go to here. This is exactly this. Uh, uh, you get you get the Iwahori thing, but there are many other elements here correspond to different W. So uh, those you can also pull back, push forward. Those you actually you sometimes actually it will produce let's say some cohomology of F and the variety missing here. I think so that actually gives you the some unipotent part, not not just you or her. So if you just take one, you will get the, but, but there's some other element. I see, so this someone gives some a posterior justification for Lustig's definition of what unipotent is. Yeah, it's, uh, mm. yeah. and it's exactly matched Lustig's. Mm, great. <laughs> mm. Sorry, can I ask a very simple question regarding this diagram? Uh -huh. This very diagram here. Um, so on the right hand side, the right vertical map, um, I mean, the map from the geometric realizations from the categorical trace down to that, to the sheaves on the twisted loop space. Um, can you say something about that? Is that, for example, um, is this song to, for example, fully faithful? From where? Sorry, Sorry the right, the vertical map on the right hand side. Oh, yeah. this um, is uh, in many times fully faithful. Right, right. There's some assumption, yeah, like some something like the properness of x. x so you, you so you, you do need some additional conditions to make it. Yeah, in this complete general setting, of course, it's you can't think and much, but the, under some like x to y, it's some something like proper. It's like classifying space of uh, just, just classifying the Yuvahori map to classifying space of loop group. So you need some yeah. finite, basically some. Finalness condition and with some base change property to see this is really good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, and in some case, this is uh, actually equivalence categories. But for example, you do this in base Kapnikos equivalence. On the represent Galois side, actually, this is going to be some equivalence categories. But on the, on the geometric side, it's just a fully faithful, it only captures the unipotent part. Okay, thanks. thanks. Can you say something about how you transport Professor Kopnikov to uh, this mixed, mixed characteristic situation? I think it's a circle by bundle argument. There are actually two ways to do it. Actually, one is using a circle by module. So, originally, I was thinking the circle by module, one needs full torus, like a rotation torus, so, which doesn't exist in the mixed characteristic, but turns out that, like, 
you one don't need the rotation torus, one just needs central torus, which fortunately was already constructed by Bart and Schotter. Once you have the line bundle, you have the central torus, so you can do it. Another one is like this work of uh, James Tao and uh, like uh, uh, Rob, uh, Roman Trapping. They you present the F and H categories, the co limit of finite H categories. At the finite H category, you can match everything easily. And, and does that work? Uh, does that require characteristic zero coefficients? Hmm? Does that require characteristic zero coefficients? So, romance is still here. I think it probably doesn't actually. That'd be great. I don't think actually it, it should. Um, the historical bimodule one might need the characteristic zero. I think. But I think yeah. this presentation of the F and H categories co limit diagram of finite H categories pretty it should work for any coefficient. Cool. Um, I also had a more technical question, but I think I'll wait on that until the recording is over. All right. Any other questions? Uh, I guess just an easy question continuing this mixed characteristic based on Kafkov equivalence. So, is there some paper you can read regarding this story, or is this like and where, where could, could I read up on, on this? Um, what? The mixed characteristic. So you mentioned that there's also a mixed characteristic version of this equivalence, the Kovnikov's equivalence. So is this already, is there already it, some paper where it's proven or is this It's like not uh, written down yet. I think I hope after this uh, will also come with, uh, some, let's say some, maybe some appendix with uh, this paper with uh, Tamir. I also have another question. So, so in your work and also in this other work of Ben Sinato, Chen and Helm, they somewhat use this trace, categorical trace on Besnikovnikov's equivalence to get all this information about uh, some of the unipotent parts of uh, the entire story. So is there maybe a hope to get, to have a more general version of Besnikovnikov's equivalence that whose trace will give us somehow more than the unipotent part of I mean, yeah, so this on, is yeah. what I mentioned here. There's 10 oh, version. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think one can extend this, replace this by 10. I'm sorry, here, this here. Of course, there's some work to do to, to one should be able to replace this by tame and here by tame. Tame, as I said here, it really means when you restrict to each Newton strata, it's a depth zero representation. That's the, meaning it, uh, it's compact induction from some parahoric and the, then you take the, the, but you take the representation is just the representation of finite group of the corresponding Levy quotient. Any more questions? Can, can I ask a question? Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, just very naively. Does it make sense to ask if you can compare your equivalence to like the restricted version of geometric long-long correspondence? By like Gates, like this six author, AGKR. Like global things. This is kind of local. So is there like a local to global or some, some kind of, I, I, I don't know, I'm just. No, you could ask. I mean, there's some conjectures, but it's probably hard to prove at the moment. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's a, as I mentioned, like, for example, this, uh, uh, I mentioned here in this local case, one produced some example, one produced some coherent shift here, mm -hmm. and this coherent shift somehow, some integral version also appears as patching. This is kind of Okay, Chris. Thanks. 
One last question for me. Uh, when you generalize, hopefully generalize to the tame case, would this also then hopefully work with integral coefficients? <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, even now it's uh, integral coefficient is uh, uh, not. Uh, well, but for the unipotent part, in some sense, the integral coefficient should be harder as you observe, yeah, right? Because it's not right. a connected component. That's right. But one could hope that in the tame case, it's easier. I don't know. But. That's actually exactly what I was thinking. But, uh, uh, hopefully, yeah, it's, uh, it's at some point, yeah, you, you are right. Integral coefficient should probably should be actually easier. Or maybe more, I mean, from category, more manageable. I mean, the unicorn part is not really well behaved. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else? Anyone else want to? <laughs> well, okay. I mean, we can see if, yeah. But um, let's, uh, yeah, let's thank Xinwen again. Good luck. <laughs>